Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I was requested from a subscriber to color out of this Mindful Mandalas. It is called Mandala Magic Volume 2. This was included in a flip through video that I did real recently. It was three separate books that I did flip throughs of. And she indicated that she loves mandalas and would like to see me color a picture out of here. So I thought I would do that today. I am, of course, going to be coloring with my Chromatech glitter gel pens. I will leave a link again to these down below as well as um, the refill set. I did pick out my colors ahead of time so that I could also pick out some refill so I don't have to waste time um, if one of these run out trying to dig through my refill boxes to find refills for the glitter gel pens. This is the 50 set that I am going to be coloring out of. On Amazon it's called a 100 set because you get the 50 pens and a set of the 50 refills. I believe now they no longer come in the boxes. They come in a bag, I guess, is what I was told. And the glitter gel pens themselves no longer have the, I don't know if you can see it or if I'm, yeah, you can't really see it on here. Maybe I'll take one of the darker ones. Um, they used to have the name and uh well it was like a alphanumeric code on the barrel itself and because that got quite expensive to do they opted to take that off now and keep the price of these pens the same when i posed the question to you guys in regard to would you like to see the price of the pens increase and put the code back on or leave the code off the barrel of the pen and leave the price the same? It was pretty torn. <laughs> but I, what won out was keeping the price the same, taking the code off of the barrel. Um, and I know that's going to upset some of you, but I do want to point out the fact that the refills themselves are still going to have the code on. And you can see the code of the refill through this clear barrel. So you are still going to be able to match up like this one is G08. I can see it on the refill. So I can still match up what refill that I need for this particular pen. So even though it's not going to be printed on the barrel itself, you can still see what color that is and what refill you're going to need. So I think all in all, with taking this off the barrel, keeping the cost of the pens the same instead of having to increase it, I think is actually going to work out okay. Because like I said, you can still match up what color refill goes in this pen by just looking at the code on the refill itself inside the barrel. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. Again, I know some of you may not like it and others of you are going to like it. It, it is kind of a horse apiece. Um, but in the future, that is what the Chromatech glitter gel pens will have. It won't be on the barrel, but again, you can still see it on the refill itself. So again, I will link this all down below for the countries that they are available in between the United States, UK, and Canada. I will link the book down below also. So, without further ado, I did pick out a picture in here that I would like to color with you guys. Um, and that is this one. These are set up very similar to Sun Life Drawings books. Um, this is a full size where Sun Life Drawings most recent mandala books were in square format. So they were a little bit smaller as you can see. These books are eight and a half by 11, but they do have the black on the back of each page to help prevent bleed through. There is a um, white design on the back of each page. And if you want to, you could color that in also. 
Um, but it's, if you do opt to use uh, alcohol markers on here, that would be fine um, because they basically are one-sided. I am not going to be using alcohol markers. Again, I'm going to be using my glitter gel pens. And I'm just going to color in with a couple shades of blue and a couple shades of brown in for this particular mandala. I haven't used blues and browns in a long time. So I thought that's what we would do today. So let me zoom you in and we will get going. Uh, let's see, what should I do for the middle? I think I will start out with the lighter blue for the middle. And we'll see. Now, gel pens, of course, take quite a bit longer to color with than if I were to do this with alcohol markers. So I'm not sure if I will get this all done in one color and chat or if I'll have to split it up into two. Because I do also want to work on the Johanna Basford picture that I'm coloring with Prismacolor. Um, I want to do a color and chat on that also. So if this gets too long, I'll run out of stuff to chat about for that video. <laughs> You know, got to keep the, the conversation flowing, right? Okay, so there's the light blue. So I think to contrast with that, we will go with the dark brown around that. Update on the baby birdies out in the garage. You guys sick of hearing about my babies? <laughs> um, they're getting so big. Oh my gosh. In case you haven't seen my previous videos or for those of you that are new to my channel, I had a pair of nesting morning doves come build a nest in the the garage and by the time we seen the nest um it was a we couldn't move it it i believe she had already laid eggs and, and was you know sitting on the nest 24 7 so we of course couldn't tear out the nest then um and yeah she must have laid the eggs and these eggs actually hatched a long long time ago because these babies are pretty big already and I never knew that they had hatched these baby birds are so quiet they don't make a peep and now they must be big enough that mom and dad leave both leave them alone in the nest now for periods of time so right now, I went out and checked on them before the filming of this, and yeah, they're there alone. Yesterday, they were alone for quite a while in the nest. So, yeah, mom and dad are saying, okay, you're big enough to babysit yourselves now. <laughs> oh, and naming the birds. In my last color and chat, when I was working on the butterflies with the chameleon markers I had asked your opinions on names for the birds and because mom and dad are Emily and Edward I wanted to come up with some E names and I got a lot of awesome suggestions from you guys and I think what I am going to go with is Elsa that was suggested and that was one name I was thinking of too was Elsa and then another name that was suggested and I thought was so awesome is Emma there weren't really hardly any boy names suggested so I thought okay we got two little girls out there <laughs> so it's going to be Elsa and Emma so then we have Emily and Edward and we have Elsa and Emma <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, we give all of our pets names, right? And 
I know these will never be my pets, but it's been really awesome seeing the process, you know, from these two building the nest to her laying the eggs. And now the babies are there. Considering the size of them, I don't think they're going to actually be in the nest much longer. I always see the one little birdie popping its head out, especially now when mom and dad are gone. I don't always see the other one, but just now when I was out there, I did see them both. But yeah, they're never squawking for food. They, uh, they don't make a peep. <laughs> Get it? A peep. Okay, now I'll quit. But yeah, they are the quietest little chicks. Usually you hear them peeping, especially if mom or dad come back to the nest with some food or something, you know, they, they want it. Although I guess the mom feeds the chicks dove's milk, whatever that is. So they must not bring bugs and stuff back for the babies to eat or worms or anything. So maybe that's why they don't, you know, make so much noise like other baby birds do. I don't know. Now this blue almost has like a purplish tint to it, so I'm not quite sure how this is going to look, but it'll contrast with that lighter, more turquoise-y kind of blue. So, and again, for mandalas and designs, any colors go together. You could put some of the strangest color combinations you can think of together and they'll work just fine in a mandala or a pattern or design. So yeah, you can throw pretty much anything together. I've already done patterns where my grandson picked out the colors for me. He always liked to pick out pages and stuff for me to color. And then sometimes I would let him pick out the colors. Or another thing I will do is I will just blindly go with my eyes shut and I will pick out some colors, especially when, um, before I got the Chromatex and I would pick colors out of my white uh, carousel. I'd spin it, close my eyes, and I would just feel, and I would pick out like four colors. And that's the four colors that I would color with. And yep, it still turned out great. The only time I would put one back and repick is if I somehow picked two of the same color. But otherwise, I went with it. Most of the time would never be color combo that I would have picked out. But that's what's kind of neat about doing that sometimes. Even with, you know, marker two. Person should just blindly pick some colors and color your mandala design with those colors. Now, of course, a regular picture, that, that's kind of a, a different story because especially if people are in it and stuff, you're going to want, you know, flesh tones. and Unless it's something that, you know, like a witch or something where you're going to want green skin or, you know, sometimes I see some colored in with blue skin, like mermaids and aliens. Now, of course, because gel pens are water-based if you do color entirely with gel pens on this create space paper or amazon paper um it sometimes can warp the paper a little bit but not bad i've never had a problem and i have never ever had my gel pens bleed through any paper that i have colored on and you know me, I have colored a lot with gel pens, so. You know, even on this thin paper, I have not had a problem, so. Pen's kind of loose. 
So how is everyone doing today? I am recording this on a Saturday morning. I put out my color and chat from yesterday. Well, actually that got started on Thursday morning. Didn't get finished until yesterday morning. Big Bang Theory took priority Thursday night. <laughs> so yeah, that did not get up on Thursday like I had intended, but that's okay. Got up yesterday. So as long as I was requested to color one out of here, I thought mm, this morning would be a good time to do that. And then, yeah, I want to do part two to the Johanna Basford picture with my Prismacolors. And I don't know if I'm going to record any more today or not because I worked for a while last night on Maddie's Minnie Mouse uh, diamond painting because, yeah, time is dwindling down June 6th, 7th, sorry, it is coming up fast and her party is going to be that Saturday on the 8th. So I think that's like three weeks from today. So yeah, that time went by really fast and I have quite a bit to do on it yet. I um, opened up one big section of the diamond painting it's down to the bottom so there's two big sections for me to do <laughs> and I was thinking maybe it would go a little bit faster that way because then I'm not putting away the same color and taking it back out so I opted to do I think we're gonna go with the blue again I opted to do a large section so that I only have Two sections to go. <laughs> it sounds better that way. So, but there's quite a bit of confetti in the section that I'm doing, so that always goes slower then. For those of you who diamond paint, you know exactly what I'm talking about. do these down here too so I'm not twirling you around too much you know when I color on my mandalas I have to turn the book around in order to color on it so I hope I don't make you sick today watching this again as you can see these Gel pens are so nice and juicy, and they color so smooth. That's why I typically use these when I do my color and chats, because they color faster, and they're just, you know, so easy to color with on camera and the ink doesn't quit so I don't have to you know keep trying to get the ink going and although my color technique ones are good too and I have some Cali art gel pens too so I may get those out sometime too color with some different kind of gel pens maybe on camera the majority of you did want me to color that entire Johanna Basford picture on camera, so I will do that. Again, don't know how many parts it'll be because I'm thinking I'm not going to be doing real long color and chats on that. Um, especially with wanting to dedicate 
a lot of time to my diamond painting these next few weeks. I may keep the colorant chats like around an hour, which isn't really necessarily short. <laughs> it's just shorter than what I have been doing. A lot of times when I start a picture and I'm doing a color and chat, I like to finish that picture. So whether that color and chat is an hour or it's three hours, will all depend on the picture, what I'm coloring with, how much detail there is, whether I goof something up and have to try to fix it. <laughs> no, we never do that, right? I think the worst mistake I made on camera was when I was coloring that Jade Summer. I can't remember what. Uh, was it a Chibi Girls? That uh, volume two, well, the combo volume one and two grayscale book that came out. I'm not sure. Um, but it was, yeah, it was one of those. And I colored the inside of her mouth red rather than a pink color and it looked absolutely horrible and I started trying to fix it on camera and yeah I could tell it was gonna take a while so I think I think that was a two-part color and chat if I'm not mistaken because either that or I just paused the video and I took the colorless blender over and over and over to try to get that red out. And for anybody that has worked with marker and colored pencil, you know red is pretty much the hardest color to get back off your paper <laughs> to either erase colored pencil or, you know, get red marker back off. It's a very uh, permanent color, but, you know, I would use the colorless blender and then I'd let it dry and then I'd use it again and then I'd let it dry. And I must have done that about a dozen times. And it did take, I was really shocked, it did take the majority of the red out. I got quite a bit of it out, but of course using the colorless blender so much which as we all know by now is not a blender it's an eraser um, it spread the alcohol out so it also erased all of the color around her mouth too so then I had to put that back in and of course because the color around it was you know dry and everything when I colored that part back in that was erased out, there was lines, you know. You could see where the dry part of the marker was and where this other part that I added back in was. But overall, it still looked much better than having this bright red mouth because that red, I mean, it looked like her mouth was completely bloody, like she got punched in the face or something. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know why I thought I could go with red. I want to move this book over a little bit because I keep hitting over here on my iPad. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my phone over a tad. You don't see me uh, putting my phone back up there and making you, making you sick. Yeah, as I was pulling the phone over, I accidentally pressed in the side button on my phone and it turned Siri on, so I got disconnected or what I thought was disconnected. And uh, then when I put the phone back up there, it was recording already, so. But I will try to edit that all out when I am finished and I get it into the editor program. We'll see what I can do. So that was right around 25 minutes. Okay, I'll have to look at that then. Let me jot that down. 25 minutes. Edit. 
that way I, you know, by the time I get this over in the editing software, I'll forget. It's always all a long process. All day yesterday, I got um, two whole videos done. Woohoo! Let's pull you back down here. Boy, we're bright on the screen. I hope the because uh, it's definitely much more shadowy here. There, that's a little better. But at least you can see. <laughs> it's not super dark. Guess I should have never pulled my phone over and just left it. I have to remember when I'm, you know, coloring out of a book that I have to move around quite a bit to bring my phone farther over so that when I have to shift my book over to the left, it doesn't keep hitting where my iPad is. And then that's also right where my bracket for that's connected to my desk comes up over my desk so that my phone is up above me. That's right where the bracket is attached to my desk too. So I can only go so far to my left before I start hitting stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I have the whole right side over here and I have to keep that cleaned off, must clean off. Everything seems to congregate over there, though. But if I keep it cleaned off, that's where I can put, you know, whatever supply I am coloring with over there. So then I don't have to reach up in front of me and you get to see my arm all the time. <laughs> I don't like doing that. And it's probably very annoying to you guys, too. Although if I'm coloring with a number of different things, there's, you know, no way you can avoid it. Like if you're working with the pan pastels and I have the pastels to the right of me and the sponges up there and, you know, if you need a bunch of different things, I won't be able to get away from it. I will have to put some up above me here. So I would still have to periodically uh, go in front of the camera. So yes, it is Saturday morning. I do hope to get this video up by tonight. I hope everybody had a great week, that it wasn't too stressful for you. You had a good week at on your job or at home. No getting sick or injured or anybody doing anything this weekend? Or are you just... Staying home and relaxing like I am. My favorite kind of weekend. I'm just such a homebody. I don't like going anywhere. <laughs> I have so many things to do. Between videos and just wanting to color and diamond painting. Oh, that's right. I do have to do laundry today, too, though. <laughs> Ew. Okay. Let's go with the dark brown. I do really like the mandalas in this book. They do very much remind me of the mandalas in the Sun Life drawing book. And I know John, the bibliophile colorist, actually finished his mandala book. That was one of his goals, and it's his first book he finished. 
and uh, I think he's going to be doing a video on that um, because he liked the mandalas in there so much. I mean, the lines are nice and crisp. They're not pixelated at all, which you can get in some of your design and mandala books. And I that is one thing that kind of always irks me when I do get a, a book and they're kind of pixelated. They're not they're not bad, but they're just not as nice and crisp and clean as like this book is and Sun Life Drawings. And Jade Summers are always nice too. And the vast majority of these in here are nice and easy, but not over simplistic, you know. So yeah, they're just right. Goldilocks would be happy. Which reminds me, I just finished my second coloring book. Woohoo! <laughs> and mine too was a Sun Life drawing book. Yay! It was the uh, One Line Animals. Book. I just love those books. They are just so simple, stress-free, and easy to color. And you pick one color, and you draw a bunch of lines. Or you color, I shouldn't say draw. You color in a bunch of lines, and it makes a picture. I just think they are so neat. But they're just so easy to color. So, yep, I finally finished up that book, and I dedicated quite a bit of time to that. You know, if your goal really is to finish up a coloring book, you pretty much have to dedicate um, your time to that coloring book and only that coloring book for a while. You know, if you have a, like, when I started um, with that book, when was that? Last week. And I thought, I'm going to finish this one. Um, you pretty much have to dedicate yourself to that book. And that's what I did for, I have no idea how long it took me to, you know, to finish those last ones in there. But I did not color out of any other coloring book besides what I was filming you know when I would color on my own I only colored out of that book until I got it done so I now have two coloring books completed Woo <laughs> but you know the more coloring books you have the less likely you're going to finish one <laughs> you know it's like there's just too many to choose from. All righty, what should we do for the background color through here? I think we will do the light blue. Should we do light blue or dark blue? I think light blue. And then these I'll do, well, I'll see. I'll see what I feel like. I can't plan anything out ahead of time. I have to wait until I color one thing in and then see what, appeals to me what what calls out to me so that's what we will do so I don't know if I should color the inside blue also again I guess I'll just wait wait and see what I think once I get this all colored in and of course this is going to take a while I don't know if you want to patiently watch me color all this in or if you want to fast forward. That is totally up to you. Because, yeah, this is probably going to take me a while to get all the way around and color this in. Same with this here outside one. So this may be a multi-parter, yeah. I think I'm going to have to make this two parts. Because we're already over half an hour. <laughs> So I'll have to see. Last time I said that it, I was going to have to make it a multi-piter. Yeah. Little, little, little. You know. A multi-part-er. I think that's, yeah, I was coloring something with marker, I remember. And I ended up 
doing it all in one. So I guess never count anything out. Got to really wing it, play things by ear. Where did that saying ever come from? Got to play it by ear. <laughs> I said something the other day, too. Bob and I were going somewhere, and I said something, and I'm like, where did that saying ever come from? It doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but, you know, it's one of those older sayings that, you know, we hear from our parents, those of us who are older, and it's something that the millennials, the young'uns, probably never even heard of. And when they hear us say some of these sayings, they're probably like, what? That doesn't even make any sense. What do you mean? Just like there are so many times they say something and you're like, what? What does that even mean? <laughs> it's that difference in the generations. We kind of all have our way of talking, I think. Especially depending on how you're brought up, you know, in my day and age. Oh, that makes me sound so old. You know, you, you did pick up a lot of, what do you call it, wording, verbiage <laughs> from your parents. And, you know, some of them are old, you know, sayings. Especially where I am completely German. I would hear, you know, some of that come out in my mom. And you don't necessarily hear that anymore these days, especially, you know, even kids that are completely of German heritage yet, which is kidding to be very rare to have anybody be 100% of anything. Um, you don't hear the young ones talking like that. They have their own lingo. And it amazes me how much of that lingo is making its way into the Webster Dictionary. When they update it, do they update it every year? And yeah, it just amazes me some of the words now that are making it into the Webster's Dictionary. But they're trying to keep up with the times, so I know a couple years ago when you, well, probably more than a couple years ago, when, when you didn't really hear of, like, vlogging and blogging that much, um, but then it was becoming more common, you know, the word vlogging, and that was added to the, I believe, one year, that was one of the words added to the dictionary and just you know technology wise especially words that were just not around even a few years ago are now very commonplace and so yeah the the words that are getting added to the Webster's dictionary kids probably don't even know what a paper Webster Dictionary looks like. Just like encyclopedias are no more. I talked about it in a previous video how, you know, we had to get out these heavy encyclopedias to do research for art term papers. Or you go to the library and do your research, look for books and My mother had kept all of her reader's digests, and that is where we got a lot of our articles and things that we had to quote from, we got out of there. Now it's just all internet research. You kids got it made. <laughs> we would have to sit down on the floor with these stack of reader's digests 
look through the contents page of every single one and see if there was anything in there that we could use for our paper that we were writing. I am really dating myself now, ain't I? I ain't I now. Yes, I was born about 120 years ago. Hmm. For 120, I don't look too bad then. I'm under 60 people. I know, to you young'uns, that's ancient. And I can remember when I was growing up, I thought 40 was ancient. My mom was like in her 40s. I was like, oh my gosh, that's old. <laughs> How things change. Before you know it, you're 40. It's like, wow, that isn't so old after all. <laughs> and now my oldest is getting into her later 30s. I'm like, oh my. I cannot believe that. Well, I had her when I was very young, and then she turned around and uh, repeated the process. So I was a grand, first time grandma at a very young age. I wasn't even 40. So, yeah, things happen. Did you guys fast forward through this yet? This is still kind of bright, isn't it? Man. And it is very cold and rainy out there. That's better. We had such gorgeous weather for a while. And boy, this whole weekend is supposed to just stink. Ugh. Very cold cold and rainy. I think we're in the 40s. And it's no wonder people get sick. Mother Nature doesn't know what she wants to do. 70s one day and 40s the next. And yeah, we're supposed to get upwards of two inches of rain this weekend. So... That is not good timing for the farmers who have finally been able to start getting out in their fields again and able to plant corn and whatnot. We don't need that much rain or it may wash away their seed and that seed is expensive. So that's not good. Plus the fact I won't be able to get out and mow my lawn this weekend. Grr. and it was already starting to actually get long once I see that it's starting to get long on the side here I know it's getting really long in the back along the house so you know with having Maddie during the week I can't really mow during the week so it's going to be a hay field by next weekend and hopefully it won't be raining next weekend Or, yeah, I'll have to have a, a tractor and a hay baler come in and get the grass off my lawn because it'll be about three feet tall. Okay, not quite, but it would take me quite a while to mow that because, again, I push mow. I don't have a rider and I w don't want a rider. That is my summer exercise. And I collect the clippings. I don't leave the clippings on the lawn. So, you know, that takes time, especially when the grass is longer, because then you got to stop all that much, all that, how do you say that? 
more often is what I mean. All that much more. Is that it? You know, to empty out the bag with the long clippings. So, yeah, the whole process takes a little longer. But it looks so awesome when it's done. Last summer, I couldn't. I had to leave the clippings on the lawn. We just put the mulcher block in the back instead of letting the clippings come out into the bag that's attached typically because Bob was, you know, still going through his cancer treatments and was on his feeding tube and all of that stuff so he couldn't haul down the clippings for me and I don't know where he takes it. So just opted to just leave the clippings on the lawn, which for the most part isn't that big of a deal. It's just when the lawn does get longer and you have to leave the clippings on the lawn and then when they dry out, you see all this dried out, you know, these rows of <laughs> dried out grass. That I don't like. I don't like to see the clippings on the lawn once they dry out. But if it can't be helped, it can't be helped. This must be starting to run out. I figured this would be one that was going to run out first. Yeah, we are. We are done. All right. So let's get the refill popped in. one thing about glitter gel pens when you run out of a color and you have a refill it takes you two seconds to do it and you're on your way again <laughs> not that way with markers especially if they're not refillable you run out then you're out although you know if you haven't done it yet you can one time after it runs out of ink, it's typically not the ink that it has run out of, it's the alcohol. And you can refill those budget-friendly ones with alcohol one time, and it'll still stay the same color. It won't lighten up. There's enough of that color pigment left inside where you can add alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Not drinking alcohol. Don't pour bourbon or whiskey in your markers. <laughs> and I do have a video out there showing how I revive my alcohol markers, whether it be your budget-friendly markers, your Bix, your Sharpies, the fine tip and ultra fine tip. So, in case anybody's interested in that video, it is out there. Okay, now. I think I will do the dark blue around the outside and maybe the light brown on the inside. I think I'm going to grab both pens and I'm going to go around and we are going to do them at the same time so I'm not twirling you around too much I'll do a few and then before I have to flip the book around I'll do the insides In that last color in chat, I had said, <laughs> I told you guys that right before I started recording, I was getting everything set up on my desk that the toilet flushed in the main bathroom down the hall from me. Nobody else was home. This was, 
yesterday morning before Maddie got here. And yeah, it, I don't know. I, I still don't know what happened. I said, unless my cats train themselves how to go on the toilet and how to flush the toilet, I have no idea what happened. I told Bob that we went out to eat last night and I told him about it and he's like, ah, that's just your imagination. I said, how can I imagine that? I said, it happened. Ah. <laughs> so skeptical. Doesn't believe me. Isn't that rude? Okay, I don't want to do go this way because then I'm going to be putting my hand over the top of the ink. That's one thing you always got to think about in the back of your mind when you're coloring with gel pens. Is where's your hand going to go? <laughs> kind of has become pretty much second nature for me now because I do color with them so often. But not all the time, and I still, once in a while, will smudge my gel pen on the page. But as you can see, I use my pinky to brace myself, and so then that's how I always color. <laughs> With gel pen, anyhow, I noticed. Keeps me steady, I guess. And so then it helps me go like up and around sometimes okay let's go in with the light brown so yeah the sides of my hand or side of my hand and my pinky are always full of glitter always always and I do have one of those black gloves, um, an artist glove. I don't know if all of you have seen them. Do I have one here? Yeah, it's like this. And um, only your um, last three fingers. How is this one set up? This one only has two. Hmm. The other one I have, I believe, has the three fingers covered, and then only these two are out. Um, so that, you know, you don't smudge as much, especially when you're working with pencil. Um, but I guess it just, it. I tried it once in a while with my gel pens, and yeah, it did prevent my hand from getting dirty, but definitely doesn't help from, you know, smudging your your gel pen ink. And it was just a pain to put on and take off all the time. Like if I would go and do something or go to the bathroom or, you know, whatever, you got to take it off. If I'm just quick coming and getting something out of the kitchen or whatever, I didn't take it off. But, you know, so for true artists, it's probably really handy because they probably are at their projects for quite a while. And especially for colored pencil where they don't want to smudge their pictures and stuff. I imagine that's who these were designed for. That particular one, this one came with my, um, I haven't even tried it, as you can see, it's still in the package. That came with my uh, 168 set of my Limoche alcohol markers. But, and that one looks like the fingers are quite long in it. I do not have long fingers. Kind of short and stubby. with losing all the weight that I did, they got quite a bit skinnier. I had to have, like this ring I had to have taken in. So now it's kind of thin. And 
This used to be on my ring finger, my mother's ring. Now I wear it on my middle finger. <laughs> So my height, my fingers did get skinnier too, but they're still kind of short. And we are almost at an hour, so I think I am going to be ending this pretty soon. And we can pick it up in another part. Now, if part two, this is what happened to me when I was, what picture was I coloring? And I had to quit because Maddie was coming. So I had told you guys that it was going to be a two-part video. And then, oh, I think it was the flowers one. Then I came back in to color the stems and they went a lot faster than what I thought it was going to. So I just appended it to part one and ran it as one video because I think the second part was like a whole whopping 12 minutes or something like that. So it, it did end up being one part. I mean, yeah, one single video. So if I come back and I don't expect that this will only take 10 minutes. I do expect that it's going to take a while because the outside, of course, is bigger than the inside, so it, it takes a while to color. So I will just do another color in chat and finish that up. Maybe tonight yet, I don't know. Like I said, I want to get working on that diamond painting. And for me, it's easier to work on diamond painting at night than during the day, which is probably the total opposite of most of you that do diamond painting. You're like, what? Well, I have this blob in my eye. For any of you that have floaters in your eye, will know what I'm talking about, maybe. Um, I have a ton, 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 ton of those black floaters in my eyes, both eyes, and some of them are quite big. So whenever I look up, of course, this floater goes up, <laughs> you know, and then it slowly starts falling down because some of them are, are quite large. And, of course, floaters, there's really not a whole lot they can do about. But now, starting, I think it was the end of last year, all of a sudden, I got this real, it's not black, but it's a big blob in my left eye. And I knew I was, um, my last eye checkup, I was getting the start of cataracts. Again, showing my age, especially in my left eye. Left eye is worse than the right eye. I have a few cataracts in each eye. Not bad enough to do surgery on as of last year yet, but, and so then this blob formed and I'm like, okay, that has nothing to do with the cataract, does it? But yet it's really affecting my vision. So when I look up, it's it's really strange. It goes the opposite direction. So if I look up, this blob goes down. If I look down, this blob goes up or vice versa. Like if you look to the right, this thing goes to the left and vice versa. And it is so annoying and it's very large. And whenever it's bright outside and I'm driving, it really gets in the way. So yeah, when I try to diamond paint during the day, and you know, you're looking up at your canvas, down to your drills, up at your canvas, down to your drills constantly. And so this blob is moving around in my eye constantly. And at night, it, it just doesn't, because of the brightness, you know, it's not as bright out and stuff. It doesn't bother me as much. So anyhow, after that whole long story, I am going to leave this here. 
Um, and yeah, I'll come back and finish this in part two. So I hope everybody's having a great weekend. And if you liked what you've seen today, please hit that like button and subscribe if you are new to my channel. Um, I hope everybody enjoys their Saturday. Hopefully I will get this finished today or tomorrow so I can still get this video up this weekend. But as always, happy coloring. Bye guys.